Hello, my name is Brad Schmidt. I'm the Director of Alumni Engagement here at Bethel College. I'm also a 1988 graduate. Due to safety considerations related to COVID-19, we're unable to gather in person this year. I'm happy we can connect digitally. Just over 124 years ago, on June 3, 1896, the Bethel College Alumni Banquet tradition began. A lot has changed in 124 years. Most notable this year is the ability to gather online when meeting in person is not an option. I'm thankful for the technology that makes this possible. A high value on staying connected, whether in person or in the online world, is just one of the things that makes us uniquely Threshers. So thanks for taking the time to tune in. The highlight of our traditional alumni banquet is recognizing our 50th anniversary class. We continue that tradition by honoring the Golden Thresher class of 1970. Thank you to John Thiessen for pulling together some interesting Bethel facts about the year 1969 to 1970. There were 524 FTE students, about an 8% decrease from the previous year. 54% were men and 46% were women. 65% of the students were from Kansas, 25% of all students were from Harvey County, 69% were some variety of Mennonite, and there was 12 foreign students plus 16 from Canada, a significant decrease from the previous year. There were 94 graduates in spring 1970. A few of these were two-year associate degrees. The dominant majors were elementary ed and English. This was the first year of the 414 class schedule, a fall semester, an interterm, and a spring semester. The schedule in previous years had been a quarter system, with three quarters per school year instead of two semesters. The move to 414 was intended to facilitate cooperation with other neighboring colleges, especially to have shared courses during interterm. This schedule was followed up until this year when we make the change to switch to a May term. The board of directors was expanded to 33 members, three of them were women, and all but two had traditional Mennonite names. Plays, musicals, and operas during the year included The Little Foxes, Merchant of Venice, and The Plumber's Opera. The football team's record was 4-5. and five. The men's basketball team record was 12-10. and 10. There was very little reporting on women's athletics, although there was intercollegiate women's basketball. The Thresherette's record was three and five. There was still a homecoming queen, although in fall over half of the students signed a petition against having a queen, citing issues of sexism. Freshman initiation was abolished. No more beanies or name tags. Hoop rolling was still a fad in the spring. Also popular were tricycle races. Continuing a project from the previous year, a group of students attempted to break a world record by flying a kite over six miles in altitude. Click the link in the comments to view a photo. A quote from a 1970s Thresher yearbook cited positive activity in the men's dorm, Goring Hall, the purchase of a color television set combined with the Christmas tree decorating party to highlight the year for the residents. Former Dean of Students Esco Lowen built a tractor action pipe organ in the Fine Arts Center, combining parts from four previous organs including one from Newton's old First Presbyterian Siberian Church. Music students use this as a practice organ. Does anyone know what happened to this organ? And what room is it in? Get in touch with the alumni office if you have information. On October 15, 1969, known as Vietnam Moratorium Day, Bethel anti-war protests, including ringing the Bethel bell, received national news coverage. Click the link below to view the clip. Students also traveled to Washington, D.C. in November to participate in protests and took along the Bethel bell. There was also a peace march from Newton to Wichita in which protesters were pelted with eggs by pro-war hecklers. There was a lot of town-gown tension between the college and some Newton residents. There were even some formal mediation sessions about the division. Football coach Otto Unruh resigned. He had coached at Bethel from 1929 to 1943 and then 1967 to 1970. He was a longtime fixture of Bethel athletics. There was a coffee house named The Other Side. There was some kind of program called the Free University, which included topics like women's liberation, white racism, imperialism, Zen Buddhism, and Marxism. Senator George McGovern spoke at Bethel on February 11, 1970. He was soon to become the Democratic presidential candidate for the 1972 election.
Basketball star Bill Russell spoke at the athletic banquet. A new educational program, Bethel Experimental Learning Laboratory, or BELL, was tried out for 61st year and sophomore students. The goals of the program aren't really very clear 50 years later. Student Jerry Becker ranked 315th out of 1,500 in the National Putnam Mathematics Contest, continuing Bethel's tradition of math competitiveness. Most people who take the Putnam get a score of zero. President Orville Voth resigned at the end of this year, his resignation to be effective in June 1971. He had been president since February 1967. Those are just a few memories from your senior year. I hope this snapshot of the past has brought back other fond memories of your Bethel experience. Today, 50 years after you graduated, we celebrate with you and wish you well for many years to come. If you'd like to learn more about other classes celebrating Milestone Reunions this year, check out the Milestone Reunion video on the Bethel College YouTube channel. At this time, I'll ask Bethel College President John Gearing to share some remarks. Thank you, Brad, and members of the, of the alumni office. And thank you, students, for sharing those reflections from 50 years ago. They show that Bethel has a long history of engaging with meaningful topics in society. Everything apparently from the academic calendar, to sexism, to war, and the town gown divide. Members of the 50th anniversary class, I'm glad you are a part of Bethel's history. You enrich the lives of those around you when you were students here. I agree with Brad when he says it's unfortunate that we can't meet in person this year. And I also share his enthusiasm and gratefulness that we have technology that allows us to meet across space. It has been a joy in the past two years to sit in on the 50th anniversary class reunions and listen to graduates reflect on their time here at Bethel. I see in those reunions and the reflections the full scope of humanity, the joy, the humor, the serious reflection, the sadness and the regret that the graduates share, to name just a few of the range of emotions. The one consistent outcome of the reunions is the inescapable conclusion that this class, the one that is being celebrated, is probably the best class in Bethel's history. And that's the way it should be, right? Our lived experiences, especially those during the formative years of college, somehow stand out among all our years as being something very special. That's the way it should be, and the way we try to make it now for our current students. Just as you brought excitement and joy to a campus many years ago, you still do so today. One of our college values is a commitment to intergenerational living. This value has provided an important perspective for me and other members of the campus community during the past six months. We can look back on history and learn from it. And we needed to as we dealt with the global COVID-19 pandemic. For example, Keith Sprunger's excellent history of Bethel College from 1887 to 2012 provided much needed context for the pandemic. Now, you may recall that the influenza pandemic originated near Fort Riley, Kansas back in 1918 and 1919. It should give us pause that our state was the equivalent of Wuhan in today's COVID-19 pandemic. And the flu was not only disruptive to health, but also to the regular functioning of the college. According to Professor Emeritus Sprunger, the influenza hit campus in three waves, October and December 1918 and March 1919. The campus had to close two times for a total of six weeks. The advice from Topeka was for no unnecessary shopping trips and no more than 10 people in a store at one time. Schools, churches, and movie theaters were all closed. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? In the end, the pandemic killed nearly 50 million people worldwide, including 675,000 in the United States, 5,500 in Kansas, and three people at Bethel College, an alumnus, Erwin Howery, at an army camp, and two students, Henry Regeer and Hilda Reeson. The Bethel College Monthly summed up the feeling on campus, quote, we have tasted the bitter cup 
which has been a part of the world's sorrow of this dark year." End quote. As I said, these reflections have provided sustenance and context for me and the college during the last few months. We need the messages and the experiences and the wisdom of the past as we na navigate the strange reality of the present. In other words, we need you. I'm glad you're a part of the present day college, just as I'm glad that you're a part of the college in the past when the trending topics were thresh thresherettes, hoop rolling, George McGovern, and the authoritarian figure of Esko Lowen. I know you will have fun reminiscing about these topics and more. Congratulations, Golden Reunion class. Thank you for your continued support of Bethel College and everything you bring to us in the present. Thanks, John. As our time together draws to a close, I'd like to remind you of the importance of your financial support of Bethel College. For the current fiscal year, the college needs to raise just over $1.73 million for the Bethel College Fund. Now is a great time to give as part of a reunion class gift. I also encourage those of you not celebrating a reunion this year to consider a gift. Thank you for your generosity and support. As the video closes, I invite you to listen to the Bethel College alma mater. The words will be on the screen, so sing along if you like. We won't listen in, I promise. Thanks for watching. Together, we'll get through this and be back to enjoying each other's company soon enough. Until then, be safe, stay healthy, and remember, we are Threshers.